Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. What we're looking at in this video is something special. It is the new Grandstream GWN 7803P switch. Now, while I don't have my switch, I'm still waiting on mine. Uh, a friend was nice enough to let me remote into his machine and uh, play with this switch so we could take a look at it in this video. So, here it is. Here is the default login screen. You can see that they show <clears throat> four different models here. And we're going to go ahead and sign in. And this is the 7803, so I believe that this is uh, 24 uh, ports. And let's see, so it's got a really nice... Um, system info screen, right? We've got everything here. It's got our MAC address, our OIDs, <clears throat> our management IP default gateway, does IP version 6, got a part number, serial number, all of those good things. Uh, we can see our CPU usage, our memory usage, our PoE status. So it's got 360 uh, watts of PoE available. We can scroll down. We can see the fan status and then we can see system events over here. So it looks like we've got 47 notifications. We got four errors. Let's see what a notification looks like. So that automatically took us to maintenance and diagnostics and it shows everything that is happening. That's, that's fantastic. I love when logs are detailed, it makes things really easy, but let's go back and start at the top. So, you got your uh, system info screen. Now, uh, the one thing that my buddy did uh, let me know is this blue save button up here never changes colors, never flashes. So Grandstream, if you're listening, if we can change that in a firmware update where this will actually change colors or flash or tell us that we need to save, that would be fantastic. All right, let's head on over to port info. Yep, so this is the 24-port switch uh, with four SFP ports. So we can click on each port and it'll give us the port information down here. So if I just keep clicking on that, it'll, it'll cycle through those. So uh, each port can do 30 watts. And let's see, so GE1 is obviously not the uplink, it's probably 23. And um, so 23 or 11, one of the two. But you can see we've got flow control, duplex speed, port status, port description. So if I edit that, can I put the description in? I sure can, and I can disable the port from there as well. And so when I cancel that, it took us back to the actual switching screen. But let's just finish taking a look at this screen real quick. So we'll go back to 23, which was active. Uh, 9,216 for the jumbo frame. And then here's all of our statistics, all of our traffic statistics. So you get under the overviews, really good stuff here at the beginning. All right, so let's take a look at switching. By the way, this is the first time I have ever got to see one of these switches. So I am really excited about that. So we've got basic port settings and it looks like we can switch between fiber and copper there. So we're going to go back to this. Oh, yeah, he's got a 10 meg something or other plugged in over there, maybe a camera or something. But if I edit this um, port, it takes us to that, that same place we were at. So that's fantastic. Here's our jumbo frame uh, configuration. You can see it's set at 92.16. And the range goes up to 10,000. The thing about jumbo frames is everything has to be uh, configured to use the same size. Otherwise, it doesn't work. All right, what do we got here for flow statistics? All right, so GE11, Gigabit Ethernet 11. We can see everything in and out, and we kind of got a taste of this uh, back on that status page. We got port auto recovery. So if a port were to shut down, we would get the reason here. That's, that's interesting. Okay, so we can take a look at our, our options here, port security, port loops, ACLs, unknown multicast, control. So we'll have to play with this. You've got your link aggregation groups. You can do up to eight lags per switch. And there's your settings. And then of course, LACP settings there. Mac address table, always important. Uh, I use the Mac address and the, the ARP table 
um, a lot when we are troubleshooting. Port security address, no security MAC addresses. So port security is not yet enabled. And then we've got our VLAN settings here. So let's see if we can add a VLAN. And we're going to add, so you can add a range. Oh, this is nice. So you can add a range or you can add, you know, uh, onesie, twosies as long as it's done appropriately. So if I add VLAN 6, we'll go ahead and save it. And by default, it doesn't look like it's uh, tagged or untagged on anything, which is not a bad uh, thing. So we can come in here and we can do member type. And so we can hit tag all. We can hit untagged all or we can remove all. So since uh, it's, a, it's an additional VLAN, not our uh, um, untagged VLAN, we would go ahead and tag that one on every um, port. So I'm just going to put Willie test on here, uh, delete, and save that. Oh, can't have, can't, you got to, So we'll go ahead and save that and then have to remember to save that <laughs> up there at the top. All right, what else we got under port settings? So, yep, so here we can come in here. We can change the link type, the PVID, uh, ingress filtering, port members. So we can see what our tagged VLANs, our untagged VLANs, and what our PVID is. We've got voice VLANs, so we can do... Uh, voice VLAN, uh, kind of like auto voice VLAN here. So we would put six on there. And then our class of service and our aging. That's really nice. I can't wait to get one of these and do a full setup and, and try it out. And then here's your OUI. So you can see that uh, uh, Grandstream has added some of the other popular um, phones there. And then we've got our spanning tree settings so looks like it's a uh, standard uh spanning tree i don't know if it's rapid okay so we've got rapid standard and then mstp there so then we can come in and change the port settings they uh they did go ahead and load these things with features right out of the gate so multicast especially when we are doing uh paging multicasting is very important and uh, I can see right away that they put a lot of thought into this. And that's fantastic because uh, most of the time when we uh, see like overhead paging problems, it's usually like a multicast problem if you're using multicast paging. So really in-depth setup here on the multicast. And I appreciate that. And anyone who is using these uh, for voice and need the multicast, you are definitely going to appreciate that as well. All right, let's take a look at our POE so we can reboot. And this gives us a breakdown of everything that's going on with our POE there, our settings. And then we can look at each interface, it looks like. And we can edit. So let's what happens if we edit Gigabit Ethernet 1. So we can, oh, we can tell it. Only do uh, AF or AT. We can do uh, power mode auto. Fantastic. I, you can tell that they really did think about this before they uh, they just dropped them in the wild. Then we've got our QoS here. So we can do port priorities. We can do priority uh, mapping. So we can do IP mapping, DSCP mapping, class of service. You got queue scheduling. And so it'll do strict priority or weighted round robin. That's fantastic. We got uh, queue shaping here. I can't, I really can't wait to get one of these. And then you got rate limiting. So what happens if I rate limit? Uh, so I can do this and this. Oh, yeah. So I can say how many KBBP, KBPPS can be on each of those ports. That's fantastic. All right. Let's take a look at the security. Oh, man. So we've got storm control here. Port security. So port security, a lot of times um, what you'll do is you will say, uh, this is how many MAC addresses are allowed to be on a port. And that's what you're seeing right here, maximum MAC, um, uh, MAC addresses. So if I put this as two, uh, that means that this port will operate normally while it only sees um, two MAC addresses. 
Then if I want it to learn the Mac addresses, I say sticky Mac and the first two Macs that uh, are joined to this port or uh, show up on this port are the only two Mac addresses allowed to traverse the port. If uh, that gets violated, we can do a shutdown, an administrative shutdown, which disables the port. We can do a restriction and a protect. So we're going to have to see protect maybe moves it into another VLAN. We're going to see how Grandstream uh, implemented that, but I am so glad to see that. You've got no idea. We've got standard port isolation. ACLs, access control lists. So access control lists work a little differently than firewall rules. They are read in order, uh, but the way that you write them is a little different. So be careful and be near the switch if you've never done it before, uh, because you can uh, definitely get yourself in trouble and get yourself kicked out of the switch. IP source guard. They've got anti uh, attacks built in here. Okay. All right. Uh, DAI here. I, I am going to have to get one of these in the lab, and, and we are definitely going to have to play with it. So we can do uh, radius. So it looks like you know, radius controlled uh, VLANs. You got your AAA. Here's your 802.1X. And you can do, you know, you can do uh, forced um, assignments. You can do all kinds of stuff. So you can turn on, you know, guest VLAN. Um, this is pfft, user mode. Poor, I love it. And I love that it's all built in the UI. You got DHCP snooping. So that is fantastic. All right, what do we got under maintenance? So we've got upgrade, which there was only, there's only been one uh, firmware. And this is the firmware that's been released that's out there. So by default, I don't know if you know this, but Grandstream ships all their devices with this bogus firmware server path. Uh, that way, if you don't want to upgrade uh, right away, um, you don't have to. So you usually replace this with firmware.grandstream.com. All right, so under diagnostics, we've got our logs and you can uh, send logs to an external server. That's fantastic. We got ping, trace route, port mirroring, fiber module, um, that's fantastic. What else we got? We got backup and restore. So we can do a factory reset. We can upload a configuration. We can back up the running config, back up, uh, back up, uh, the saving configuration, SNMP. Uh, let's see. Pretty comprehensive SNMP management, just like most other switches. That's good. All right, here's Armand is not enabled. And then we've got LLDP. So uh, we can definitely, definitely get down with using LLDP because that's how a lot of our phones are going to do auto configuration. A lot of our devices in general are going to do auto configuration. And then under system, you've got your time settings and you've got your login service. So we can set our management IP on a different uh, VLAN and then you've got ooh, access control. So we can SSH in and then you've got user management. So I am super, super excited about these switches. And, and this is just a taste. This is just the beginning for Grandstream. And you're going to be able to manage these at uh, that new GWN.cloud. So I, I can't even tell you how excited I am about this. I hope mine show up soon so that we can really dig in and start doing some in the weeds videos on these. And uh, we can start doing training and stuff like that. I'm going to try to, uh, as soon as Grandstream comes out with the new material uh, that has their routers and switches and everything into it, I'm going to talk to them about, um, you know, getting my Grandstream certified trainer in the networking products. So we'll see how that works out. But if you've got any questions about the switches, let me know. If I can't answer it, I'll ask uh, my buddy, see if he knows. But uh, until my switches come in, I'll have to rely on this remoting in. And I really want to thank Dave. Dave, thank you very much um, for making this possible. Uh, once again, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, comment, share, interact. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with our affiliate links. Um, our Patreon link and the link if you need IT consulting of any kind. And if we can't help you, We'll get you to someone who can. Head on over to willyhow.com. 
Click hire us or contact us. Fill that information out and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.